Have you ever heard of the Mandela effect? Tell us. It's where a percentage of the population remembers an event happening in past history differently than what it actually happened, almost like you switch universes or something. And it happened to me, and it was... Well, we talked about that already here today, that everything is about perspective. And so as generations move on, and those that had first-hand knowledge of the experience become fewer, which really, when you think about it, is about every event in the world, because the events that happen, everyone is not involved in them. Your televisions make you all more current participants than in time past. But future generations will always see things differently than those who lived them. And we are really promoters of coming into vibrational alignment with your source energy so that you see everything through the eyes of source. We accept what you are saying as something that is logical and natural. Okay. Well, let me go on to my other... Well, you can go further in that. You don't seem satisfied with what we said. Well, I, so I'll tell you the exact event, and it seems really trivial, and it's kind of funny, but I majored in writing for television and film, and I was at home watching the news with my partner, and it was reported that Jack Palance had died. And so she said, well, who's that? And I was like, you know, city slickers. And we had this whole conversation. I was frustrated at myself because I couldn't remember the other movies that he'd been in, like Shane. Then like a year later, I'm listening to a radio show actually on the concept of time. And uh, this woman calls up and she says, this is so weird. I just found out that Jack Palance um, did not pass away. But I distinctly remember seeing it on TV. And so I went to my partner and I was like, wow, guess what? He didn't die. Sort of a thing. Anybody else have this happen? Anyway, so I go to her. She doesn't even remember the conversation. She says it never happened. And I remember it in detail because of my background in writing for television and film. And so? And it was so just this kind is of a conversation about someone having a better memory of someone else. Uh, do you think that, okay, because I, I honestly wondered if there was like a split in time or well, something. Well, what it is, Esther had a conversation with someone at her office recently about something pertaining to the workshop here this weekend. And when she came to the hotel, it was not set up the way she had asked for it to be. And so she asked someone else who had been at the same conversation, and he remembered hearing Esther request it a certain way. But the person who Esther was actually talking to didn't hear what she said. So what that is about is Esther was conveying information to someone with whom she had not achieved vibrational resonance. So the person couldn't hear her words because she was in a different vibrational wavelength. Does that make sense to you? Things that interest you, you are more likely to find a connection with than things that you're not that interested in. This business of vibration is much bigger and more important than anyone realized. And almost everyone puts much more importance on the words they speak or the actions they offer than they do about the vibrational stance from which they offer them. Esther at first was a little annoyed because she thought she had been very clear with her words. But in thinking back, there was something else going on. That particular person was sort of in an uncomfortable place because she had made a big mistake about something and she was trying to figure out a way to deliver that information to Esther. And so even though she may have been hearing the words that Esther was offering, she was not receiving the words that Esther was offering because she was on another, in other words, someone who's in a defensive mode cannot receive someone who isn't and vice versa. You see what we're getting at? I do. So then... Let me repeat what I heard, and then tell me where I'm off. What I just heard is that it's possible for an event to happen that only certain people remember because they're a vibrational match to that event? Yes. Here's another way of saying it. What you perceive, that's a good word, yes? What you perceive in any moment in time is much more about the vibration that you brought to the table than it is about anything that's said. It's like eyewitness reports. Esther remembers 
some years ago, the first time it really became evident to her, and she was conversant with us at the time, of seeing on television the Rodney King beating. And Esther thought everyone in the world would see it the way she saw it. And then there was a poll that was taken, and a large percentage of the population saw it different than Esther saw it. Esther saw a man being beaten by policemen. Much of the world saw a man deserving to be beaten by policemen. It was the same thing, but what your perspective is, what your opinion is, what your belief is coming into something makes what you receive from the moment different than someone else who has different beliefs coming into it. Okay. All right. Now, this situation where it's something that neither one of you cared that much about, that you're having a harder time with that, but just pay attention to what's happening as you're moving along, and you'll get a sense. Let us put it to you this way. Everything is perceptual. The reality that you are claiming you are living is your perception of the reality that you are living. And your perception of the reality that you are living, there are a lot of reasons for you to perceive the reality that you are living as you are living it. Did you follow all of that? That's why we think it is so exciting for you to get hold of the idea that in a now connected state, connected with source energy, and as you begin to perceive through the eyes of source that you can dominate your vibrational frequency and therefore your point of attraction so that you will begin perceiving as your inner being perceives, not through the lens of trouble you may have lived, but through the lens of your invincibility and your power. Can you imagine how that would change your point of attraction? When we talk about your point of attraction, can we separate your point of attraction from perceiving? We can't. What you perceive and what you believe is what you're offering, which is what you're getting back. And so a lot of people say, well, I saw it, and it happened, and I'm going to talk about it as it happened. And we say, but wait, 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 wait. You saw it through your eyes of perceiving. Wouldn't you like to look at it differently? Wouldn't you like a better feeling point of attraction? And a lot of people will doggedly say, no, I want reality. But they don't understand the reality is just about their perception anyway. There is nothing that is real that is apart from your perception. So why not do the easiest thing in the world which is to change your perception and therefore change your point of attraction. In other words, let's take a very strong point. Let's say you are really feeling a financial crunch. Let's say you are really hurting financially. And there's evidence, bills in your mailbox and creditors calling you on the telephone and not enough money in your bank account. And you would proclaim, yes, well, I have this perception, all right, Abraham. Yes, I do. And there's a lot of reasons that I perceive it this way. We say, all right, we'll accept that your perception is valid. We're just asking you, is that a perception that is serving you well? Because it's a perception that you say is valid and it is a perception that keeps the same thing happening to you. But if you could shift your perspective, if you could shift your perception and therefore change your point of attraction and therefore change your financial outcome, wouldn't you want to do that? Oh, yeah. We're talking about a vibrational world. You're talking about a reality world. We're talking about a vibrational reality. You're talking about the stuff that you see on the news or the things that you hear as you're talking to one another. And we are saying you can have it any way you want it to be, but you've got to find some consistency with your vibration. Now, that sends out a little alarm wave in most audiences when we speak it because they often think that what we're saying is just make stuff up. Never mind paying any attention to the truth. Just make stuff up and create your reality the way you want it to and never mind anything about truth or fact or evidence. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is your inner being has an evidential body of truth about you that is truer than anything that you know about you. Your inner being knows your worthiness. You may not. Your inner being knows your right to prosperity. You may not. Your inner being knows who you really are. You may not. And so we're just asking you to accept that there's another part of you that has a perception. And we're just asking you 
to do a little bit of work to hook up with that perception because when you hook up to the perception about yourself that your inner being has about yourself now your point of attraction is in a very different place than it was before and your point of attraction will yield evidence of it that will play out in your physical experience you got that didn't you and the reason you got it is because you understand the basic laws of attraction and so forth okay Esther said to us in the beginning, because she was, she still is a rule keeper. And she always was wanting to do what she was told was right. So she believed in truth and she didn't like things that were untrue. She didn't like people who were deliberately deceptive. All of these things bothered her. And one day in a conversation, she said to us, but Abraham, that's true. That thing that I'm talking about that you say isn't good for me to talk about. Nevertheless, it is a true thing. And we said, it's true because someone focused upon it until it came to be. Anything that you focus upon will become a fact-based reality because you get what you think about. So rather than saying, I'm thinking about things that are true, whether I want them or not, isn't it better to say, I'm focusing on good-feeling things? Because if you're focusing upon good-feeling things, then you're first syncing up with who you really are. You're dovetailing with that powerful point of attraction. And now things will flow to you in a much more consistent and satisfying way. Okay, thank you. I have another question. Did so, that question change? The first question? Is it different now? It is. It is. What did it change to? It changed to worthiness, I think. Many of us suffer from this idea that we're not worthy on some level. So or from another. our answer to you, you got the idea. You resonated with the knowing that when you are in sync with your inner being, you feel loved, you feel adored, you feel capable, you feel worthy. And so that's a different point of attraction, isn't it? So now how has that question changed? I just wonder this whole notion of self sabotage does I guess it lives in the ego, right? The, the, no, the way that we it get lives in, in misunderstanding. It lives in talking about stuff you don't want. That's where it lives. Every subject is two subjects, and it's like a stick. We're picking up a stick, and on one end of the stick is wanted, and on the other end of the stick is the absence of the thing that's wanted on the other end of the stick. In other words, every subject is that, wanted and absence of it. And so it's not about ego. It's about sloppy thinking. It's about being willing to put up with thoughts that don't feel good. Because I believe that this not good feeling thought is true and therefore I should think it. It's about not thinking about the law of attraction, not thinking about my point of attraction, not thinking about my power in the universe, not thinking about my attraction power. So being sloppy with my thinking, so I'm sloppy with my vibrational output, so what I get back is sloppy too. So I get stuff I want, stuff I don't want, stuff I want, but I feel powerless because I can't tell how it's coming. It's just coming. It must be somebody else's fault. I must not be blessed. I must not be worthy because the person who is assigning the good stuff and throwing it at people isn't throwing it at me. Therefore, I must not be worthy. It's a misunderstanding. It's and not understanding about my point of attraction based upon my thoughts, based upon my feelings, based upon my connection to broader perspective. We've teased you a little bit about it by saying it's like deciding you're going to vacuum your living room and doing it but not plugging the vacuum cleaner in. <laughs> so you go through the motions and you get the mark on the chart as others watch you. Yes, we see your effort. That's really good. Yes, you're doing really a good job of covering every square inch of this. We see you're even lifting up the rugs and the furniture. That's really, really good. But you're not sucking up any dirt. You're not doing anything effective because you didn't plug in to the energy that creates worlds, you see. So you can perceive all over the place, and yes, you do. You can't turn your perception off. You can't turn your awareness off, nor would you want to in your waking state. You're always aware of something. But if you have taken some time to tend to your connection before you get out in your observant state of being, then you're tuned to the attraction of things that, when they come back to you, will please you. Okay, thank you. So what's your second question? That was the second question. I guess it had to do with self-sabotage. Sometimes, I don't know, it lives deep inside of me. No, it doesn't. It's not deep inside of you. It's just something you kept talking about, so it's right here in your hands. What's that? That's my self-sabotaging. 
It lives deep inside of me. No, it doesn't. You've got it right out here in the open. It's right out here in the open because you're talking about it. You think it lives deep inside of you because it's been out in the open and you keep walking forward and you take it with you.